Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome to the first lecture on advanced research methodology. For this first class, uh, we will introduce uh, the concepts of uh, research. First of all, uh, what is research? So different people have a different perception towards uh, what research is. So there are many definitions of research. Uh, research could be defined as the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way so as to generate new concepts, methodologies, and understandings. So it, it, research could be a new knowledge or the use of the current knowledge and then extend the current knowledge to get, um, to get more knowledge or we say to generate new concepts, to get more understanding, and uh, maybe to generate new methodologies and uh, new understandings. So this uh, definition of research encompasses both peer and uh, strategic basic research, applied research, and experimental development. So there are three types of research. One is called peer research. Number two is called applied research. And number three is called experimental development. So peer research is a research designed to expand the boundary of knowledge. You know, we, we, we have the boundary of knowledge. We know what we know. And, yeah, okay. and we want to do something. We want to research or study new area, something that no one has studied before. So that is the basic knowledge. Okay. The, the, the basic research to expand the current state of knowledge. Okay. And applied research is designed to answer the real world problems and find solutions to the real world problems. You know, there are many problems that we face problems in business problem in economics, problem in social, problems in uh, politics, the real world problem. And applied research try to do research to find solutions to the problems that society face, to the problems that organizations face, to the problems that even our country oh. faces. So that is applied research, to find okay. solutions to the real world current problem. And uh, the third one is experimental development research. It's, design, it's designed to develop new products, for example, to develop new technologies, for example. For example, right now we are uh, facing with a COVID-19 pandemic. So experimental uh, development research, for example, is done to find the vaccine for COVID-19. So they have to do what we call the experiments to test the, uh, you know, the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccine to test the, uh, for example, the side effects 
of the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. So that is called the experimental development to develop new products using experiments. Okay. Mm -hmm. or to, to develop new technologies uh, using the experiment. Okay. So we are in the social research. So Islamic finance is part of the social research okay. because we study the behavior of people in society. Okay. So, so social research produces knowledge. Okay. From our research, we will produce new knowledge and helps us come to understand the social world and our place in the, mm. in the social world. Okay. So social research has developed as a way of building knowledge that promotes agreed upon practices within the research community that helps us to avoid the limitations and pitfalls of other ways of knowing. So we, okay. want, we want to build a knowledge based on research. Okay, based on research means based on the fact, based on data. So that um, what we do um, will not be based on pure, uh, pure emotions or pure uh, guess. We do um, based on the knowledge, based on fact. So we try to understand what's going on in the in our society yeah and we do based on facts and based on data and in this class we will expose the students to how we can find the data we analyze the data yeah and, and we you know we, we get findings okay findings mean something new that uh, no one has found before Okay. So the we, we have the personal beliefs. We have developed personal beliefs okay. from, from other sources. You know, may, people have many beliefs, you know, many beliefs, many disagreements, because we got uh, the beliefs from uh, some sources, from internet, from YouTube, you know, and sometimes we got from experts, yeah. from, from a culture that we live in, uh, from personal experience. So there are many beliefs that we have uh, developed. Um, and we want to convert those um, beliefs that we get from uh, experts or from other sources, we want to develop and convert uh, those beliefs into uh, research. And in order to do research, we have the knowledge that we produce must be with um, we call social scientific manner. Okay, there are there are specific procedure specific uh, process uh, to get the knowledge. So after we do the research, it may support our beliefs, right? And uh, yes. And sometimes it doesn't support our belief. Yeah. So that's the purpose of research. Sometimes what we believe is uh, correct. Sometimes what we believe is, is not correct. Uh, yeah. The correct means it is uh, supported by facts and data. Uh, incorrect means um, uh, it is uh, not supported by facts and by data. Okay. So that's the difference between us and 
and you know those people who who speak in the uh, in the uh, cafe or eating places or on the street yeah they speak based on their personal belief but uh, we as educated people we speak based on facts yeah based on data so, yeah so that's that's the purpose of our research we want to be able to say something uh, based on the facts and data yeah yeah it's ha it's happened to me when i do my research right uh because when my my questionnaire was the first question do you know about Islam and Benkin? I so uh, some said yes, some said no. I don't. I never heard about Islam and Benkin in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why I feel that some I believe, some I don't believe. Like, yeah, I feel I know that. Yeah. So when we do research, we yeah. want to find out, you know, well, whether. For example, what people believe yeah. uh, is uh, right or not. So we want to examine how, for example, how they think or mm -hmm. their perception. Okay, for example, the perception of Muslims towards uh, Islamic banking products, the perception of non-Muslims towards uh, Islamic banking products. And there are many studies that have been done, for example. So there are studies uh, that have been done about uh, acceptance of Islamic banking products in Tajikistan, in Nigeria, in Malaysia, in many places around the world. Yeah. So what we want to do is, um, there are may maybe there are some context that people have not studied. Okay. So maybe people, other other researchers have not studied in the case of Qadar. Okay. And, uh, the, and uh, we can do research in different places and in different contexts. For example, the previous studies <coughs> may have been done before the COVID-19. Okay. Now, when uh, during this uh, pandemic crisis, uh, the context is different. The context means the situation. So the, in the COVID-19, maybe the way we do business, the way we do banking is different. Maybe now, instead of going to the bank, we have yeah. to, to do online. Right? Yep. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we can investigate. For example, the acceptance of summit banking products and services during this COVID-19 crisis. Okay. So there are many purposes for conducting social research. Okay, so some projects fall into, uh, for example, basic research. Uh, some projects fall into peer research. Some in, uh, projects fall into experimental development. Okay, so Uh, when we have a new or relatively under-researched topic, exploratory research is a way of learning about the topic. There are certain topics that are relatively new and, mm -hmm. and under-researched, means not many people, not many studies have been done on that topic. So in that case, if there are not many research done on the topic, we do uh, we, what we call exploratory research. Exploratory research can help us fill a gap in our knowledge 
about a new or under research topic or approach the topic from a different perspective to generate new and emerging insights. You know, there are certain topics that not many studies have done. So, so we do the exploratory research uh, to get a new knowledge, you know, about the topic or, okay. or a new, or, or we can get a new uh, or different perspective yeah. okay. uh, towards the topic. For example, if we have done on, on uh, the perception of non-Muslims, okay, now you can do the per perception of Muslims. So we can look at from, a, we can get understanding uh, about the different perspective in order to generate a new understanding or we call new insights. Mm -hmm. So whenever we do research at exploratory uh, level, uh, usually we are able to generate new knowledge. When you conduct a literature review and come up short, this absence of adequate research is often, a, uh, is often an indicator that exploratory research is needed. You know, sometimes you do re literature review and you find that there are not many studies done on the topic. Yes. So, exactly. So that means, uh, that means, you know, um, uh, you need to do what we call exploratory research. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, research on acceptance of uh, Islamic banking products. Yeah. It is still, it is still, uh, you know, under research. Oh yeah, of course. Means not many studies have been done on the topic. Yeah. So such topic may prompt further investigation, further studies, including the development of an appropriate methodological plan. Okay. Accordingly, this initial research may point you or other researchers toward certain research questions. So you have to develop research questions. Research questions means what uh, the questions that uh, the research wants to answer. Okay. For example, uh, what are the determinants of acceptance towards Islamic banking products and services among non-Muslims? So that is the research question. Yeah. So you want to know what factors uh, that determine the acceptance of Islamic banking products and services among non-Muslim customers. Yeah. Yes. So that is example of research question. Yeah. And then uh, methods for data collection. Once you develop research questions, and research uh, objectives, you want to find out what methods that you want to use for data collection. For example, you want to use uh, questionnaires, you can use uh, interviews, yeah. uh, observations, and other methods. So the methods for data collection is based on your research questions and your research objectives. Okay. And you will determine uh, participants, who will participate in your uh, data collection. Okay. So if you want to use a questionnaire, if you want to use um, interview, who are your respondents? Who you will ask? So that, uh, that you have to decide. The, research, yeah. the researcher has to decide who will participate in the research. 
if we want to explore how young people of different racial backgrounds have used social media to learn about or share their ideas about certain events and their motivations for doing so, we might turn to focus group interviews, for example. Okay. We can do focus group interviews to explore their attitudes where several participants are interviewed in a group setting. That is just an example. Okay, there are several levels of research. The, the lowest level is called uh, description research. Description research, when we want to describe individuals, groups, activities, events, or situations, descriptive research is appropriate. Okay, in descriptive research, usually, the researchers try to describe what happened. Describe means explain a certain phenomena as it happens. So without any description on yeah. why it happens. It doesn't have to explain why it happens. It's just explain that something or a certain phenomena happens. That's all. So we describe individuals or groups, activities, events, situations. We just describe. So descriptive research aims to generate what Clifford Goetz referred to as a thick descriptions of social life. Those that provide details, meanings, and context, typically from the perspective of the people living in in that situation. So researchers may turn to rigorous observation or related methods of interview in order to document how things are experienced with respect to phenomena under investigation. So for description, some people they use, for example, observation technique. For example, the researchers uh, that want the researchers who want to observe or study <coughs> the social event or the, okay. so, the social phenomena or the social behavior. So they just go and observe. And maybe they interview in order to, you know. To, to document in order to take note of what uh, they want to observe. Okay. I find that there are many researchers, especially from the uh, Western countries. Oh. They come to, for example, Africa, they come to Malaysia, they want to observe, for example, the, the life of the people. Yeah. I, I personally found uh, and met with one researcher from Australia who spent about four months living in, in um, the native uh, people environment in Cameron Highland. Oh. In Malaysia, we have native people. Uh, native people means the, you know, those people that uh, we call orang asli. Those, oh. those people, those native people, uh, they live uh, in the jungle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They live in the rural area, in the jungle. Yeah, in the jungle, the old house. Yeah, the basic, not more density. Yes, they live yeah. in the forest, far, far, yeah, yeah. far, far, far from the civilization. Okay. And they live in their own traditional way. 
Mm, you know, they eat by hunting, by, by, you know, taking, uh, by hunting, by planting their own food, their oh. own vegetables. They live in the traditional way. And this researcher came all the way from Australia to observe and to interview. Okay. Um, you know, how they live, the social interaction, what they do every day, how, okay. they, how they survive. So that is called the descriptive research. Okay, the second level is called explana explanation okay. or explanatory research. So in the explanatory research, the researcher wants to explain why certain phenomena happens. So there is a cause and effect, okay? For example, you want to study whether Muslims accept or do not accept, uh, sorry, if you want to explain um, whether non-Muslims accept or do not accept Islamic banking products and services. So you want to explain why, if they accept, why they accept. Yeah. If, if they don't accept, why they don't accept. What are the determinants? What are the factors that, that cause them to accept? Yeah. Or not? except the Islamic banking products and services. Okay. That is called the explanatory research. Explanation or explanatory research. Explanation, yeah. So we want to explain the causes and effects, why it happens, the correlations. If this thing happened, what happened to the other things? If X occurs, then what happens to Y? for example, or, or why things are the way they are. So that uh, kind of research we call explanatory research. For example, if you want to know the particular factors that shape people's attitudes about a controversial issue, such as a fracking, stem cell research or immigration policies, so we may conduct explanatory research. So in our case, <coughs> for example, I did a research on compliance behavior of zakat. Oh. So um, why, uh, okay, there are some Muslims who pay zakat. Some Muslims do not pay zakat. Yeah. So I did a research on the factors why they pay zakat? What are the factors that cause them to pay zakat? Okay. And what are the factors that cause them not to pay zakat? So that, that is called the explanatory research. This type of research can also provide evidence for causal relationships, suggesting that A causes B yeah. or that a causes B only under certain circumstances. Okay. Or we may want to study correlations between A and B. Okay. So if A increases, what happens to B? If A increases, uh, for example, if price of certain products increases, uh, what happens to the demand for that product? So that is called the correlation. If one goes up, what happens to the other one? It goes up or it goes down. If both, if A goes up and B goes up, there is a, we call positive correlation. If A goes up and B goes down, we call the negative correlation. Oh. So explanatory research is useful when we want to explain why things are the way they are, 
with respect to the phenomenon under investigation. Can you see the slide that I'm sharing? Yes, yeah, of course. Can we move to the next slide? Community change or action. Yes. So yeah. the the third level is community change or action. Yeah. So uh, in this uh, type of research, there are relevant stakeholders who identify the need for community change or action. So we may conduct research with the aim of prompting such community change, social action or community intervention. For instance, if a community is undergoing rapid development and some stakeholders in the community are being excluded from the development process, we may develop a research project with the aim of intervening in that process. You know, for example, the country wants to achieve the uh, de developed or the developed economy status, right? So we want to be the <clears throat> the developed or the advanced uh, economy. We yeah. want our country to progress. But when we want to achieve the economic uh, advance, there are some people who are being left out that they, they cannot follow, they cannot uh, be in the mainstream. So they are being left out. So we want to do a research um, to determine uh, and uh, explain how to include all the people uh, in the development process. So that is called community change or community change or action. So in this type of research, uh, political or social justice concerns underscore this kind of research. In some cases, the goal may be to impact public policy. So this uh, type of research is usually done, you know, by by some people. And, and not by students. Uh, I, I have not found any student do this kind of research. Usually the students do the um, explanatory research. Okay, the five approaches to research. Number one, quantitative research. Number two, qualitative okay. research. Yeah. Number three, mixed methods research. MMR, number four, arts-based research, ABR, and number five, community-based participatory research, CBPR. Okay, <coughs> let's look at quantitative research. This is the research that uh, students like to do. Yeah. I need to edit this slide. So oh. I will edit later. So quantitative, yeah, yeah. quantitative research is characterized by deductive approaches to the research process. Deductive research means we have the uh, expectation, we have the belief, okay. uh, we have the hypothesis, we call hypothesis, right? Yeah. Hypothesis is our belief or our expectation yeah. about, about the cause and effect. So uh, we have 
we have to have the belief or the expectation or hypothesis. Then we go out and collect the data. We analyze the data and we get the findings and we compare whether our data is uh, in line, uh, is in agreement or not with the hypothesis. Okay. So if our data is in agreement with our hypothesis, we say that um, this uh, hypothesis is supported by data. <clears throat> Otherwise, if our data is different or not in agreement with the hypothesis, so we say we say that um, our hypothesis is not supported by data. So quantitative research is characterized by deductive approaches to the research process aimed at proving, uh, disapproving, or lending credence to existing theories. So uh, our data may support or may not support our hypothesis. This type of research involves measuring variables Okay, we have to measure the variables and testing relationships between variables in order to reveal patterns, correlations, or causal relationships. So, for example, you want to test uh, whether um, <coughs> attitude influence uh, the acceptance, mm. right? So, you want to do the causal relationship. You may want to use a multiple regression analysis. So from the multiple regression analysis, if the coefficient is significant, uh, then we say there is a causal relationship. Okay. If the coefficient is found to be not significant, then we say that uh, there is no significant uh, yeah. uh, causal relationship between attitude and acceptance. Yeah. <coughs> Researchers may employ linear methods of data collection and analysis that result in statistical data. Okay. The values underlying quantitative research includes neutrality. So when we do quantitative research, it has to be neutral, means uh, the researchers uh, bias or, you know, uh, prior expectation must not interfere okay. uh, with the uh, uh, with the questions. Okay. So, so, for example, the questions that the researcher asks the respondents must be unbiased, must be neutral, yeah. and must be objective. And um, uh, there must be what we call a sizable scope of knowledge. Uh, means that uh, when we uh, collect the data, the, uh, the sample size that we choose must be large enough, okay? Mm -hmm. Sample size must be large enough. Now we will discuss in more detail on the criteria for choosing uh, the sample and the criteria for choosing the sample size. So we will discuss later. This approach uh, the quantitative approach is generally appropriate when your primary purpose is to explain the cause and effect or to evaluate uh, certain uh, phenomena. Okay, next one is qualitative research. Qualitative research is generally characterized by inductive approaches to knowledge building. Inductive approach means that the researcher have the 
go and collect the data first without any hypothesis, without any underlying theory, without, oh. without any prior expectation. Blank. The researcher have zero hypothesis, nothing, no expectation. The researcher go and find the data. For example, the researcher uh, wants to examine, for example, the behavior of a certain people in a rural village, right? So uh, the researcher just go to that social context. The researcher just uh, goes to the um, to the village or to the place in the rural area and observe um, and uh, collect the data by observation or by interview, record the data, analyze the data. And finally, after the data is analyzed, the researcher will find um, uh, uh, findings and based on the findings, the researcher will form the theory. So the hypothesis or the theory comes later. The data comes first. Uh, then from the data, it will generate the theory or generate the hypothesis. So inductive approach is the opposite of the deductive approach. So in qualitative research, researchers do not start with any hypothesis, no hypothesis, no theory. Okay. Go and collect the data. After analyzing the data, the researcher will come up with his or her own theory. So researchers use this approach to explore, to robustly investigate and learn about social phenomena, to unpack the meanings people ascribe to activities, situations, events, or artifacts, or to build a depth of understanding about some dimension of social life. There was one uh, researcher from Japan who came to Malaysia about um, 15 years ago, she wanted to examine the impact of Islamic education on the behavior of the people. So she came all the way from Japan and she came to Malaysia to uh, to several places and she lived among the Muslims, right? She lived among the Muslims. Uh, sometimes uh, she fasted during the month of Ramadan. She was not a Muslim. Oh. She came from Japan. Oh, Japan. Yeah, she wanted to examine the impact of Islamic education oh. on the behavior of the people among the Muslims. So whether the Islamic education makes uh, people better or not. So she spent uh, uh, a long time oh. listening to, uh, to religious, um, religious uh, lectures, right? She, she tried, she had, you know, the uh, translator to, okay. to translate for her. Yeah, from Malay to German, German, right? Yeah, from Malay to English. She, oh, English. Yeah. she understood English. She's from oh. Japan. She didn't understand Malay at first. Okay. And then she observed, okay. She, she stood at the back of the masjid. Uh, she, she wore hijab, 
but she didn't pray. Oh. Uh, but she fasted during the month of Ramadan. So that <coughs> finally, after the study was done, she had uh, certain conclusions about, oh. the, about the effects of you know, Islamic education mm -hmm. yeah. on the behavior of the people. Okay, so now she has her own theory. So the values underlying qualitative research include uh, the importance of people's subjective experiences and meaning making processes in, in the acquiring a depth of understanding that, that is detailed information from a sample size. So the in the qualitative research, sometimes it involves the bias. Okay. You know, for example, people from uh, Western countries who are non-Muslims, you know, when they observe the behavior of Muslims, for example, of course there is some, you know, subjective judgment some subjective uh, judgment and some bias. So the, um, the goal is to do the research, um, you know, in an unbiased manner. Try to be, the researcher has to try to be unbiased and try to be uh, neutral. So it's, it's uh, quite difficult. Qualitative research is generally appropriate when your primary purpose is to explore, describe, or explain. Mixed methods research or MMR involves collecting, analyzing, and in some way integrating both quantitative and qualitative data in single research. Okay. So the mix both of quantitative and qualitative research. The phases of a research project are integrated or synergistic with the quantitative phase influencing the qualitative phase or vice versa, the qualitative phase influencing the quantitative phase. MMR may result in a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon under investigation okay. because of the integration of quantitative and qualitative data. For example, you want to explain the factors which influence the acceptance of non-Muslims towards Islamic banking products and services. So if you use quantitative approach, you will send the questionnaire, right? So you will have, for example, three factors. Yeah. And they will tick and they will answer their questions. So in the end, you know, there are three factors that may or may not influence their decision or their acceptance. However, if you do qualitative research, if you go and interview those non-Muslims, you might have, you might obtain more information, okay. you know, by doing quantitative, for example, you get three factors, right? But yes, sir. if you go and interview them, they may explain more, you know? So you, you might get more, um, more information. So instead of, instead of three factors, maybe you get 12 factors, maybe you get 15 factors, maybe more factors. So, uh, MMR, mixed uh, methods of research, 
may result in a more comprehensive understanding of the phenomena under investigation. Okay, so MMR is uh, appropriate when your purpose is to describe, explain, or evaluate. Now, MMR is also routinely used in applied social and behavioral science research, including that which seeks to prompt community change or social action. So for MMR, it, it uh, involves a longer time, higher cost. So yeah. for, for master student, uh, it's um, for PhD students, you know, sometimes they do MMR. They have more, yeah. Oh. They have more time. They have three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do the research, but for masters, you have one semester. All right, maybe you choose one method. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, MMR mixed methods research, it involves more time. It involves higher cost. Uh, it involves a lot more work. Okay, arts-based research (ABR) involves adapting the tenets of creative arts in a social research project. Researchers aim to address social research questions in holistic and engaged ways in which theory and practice are intertwined. Arts-based practices draw on literary, writing, music, dance, performance, visual art, film, and other artistic mediums. ABR is a generative approach whose researchers place the inquiry process at the center and value aesthetic understanding, evocation and provocation. ABR is generally appropriate when your purpose is to explore, describe or evoke, provoke or unsettle. So this involves the uh, creative arts you know for example film film visual art dance music literary writing so this is uh, outside of our scope i think yeah yeah i mean i think so also so the last one is community based participatory research cbpr involves collaborative partnerships between researchers and non-academic stakeholders, for example, community members. Oh. So it's a joint venture between academicians and, for example, politicians, academicians okay. and uh, businessmen, for example. Researchers may participate with established community-based organizations However, this is not always the case. So CBPR is an attempt by researchers to actively involve the communities they aim to serve in every aspect of the research process, from the identification of a problem to the distribution of research findings. So this is done by you know, uh, some uh, lecturers, some academicians, Oh. And when they do research, they invite um, community members to participate to determine the objective of the research, how you want to do the research. Um, uh, so it's, it involves it involves the participation of people from the community. Yeah. So this is uh, not done by students. This is done by you know those uh, 
academicians okay. who have uh, interest in um, in uh, making the community members involved in the project. Okay. CBPR is generally appropriate when the purpose is to promote community change or community action. For example, the the uh, the research on uh, drug uh, abuse, for example. So in this case, uh, the researcher may involve, you know, some community members uh, in the research, so that um, so that after the research is done there will be some action uh, that can be taken. So there'll be some uh, change in the community that could be uh, promoted, that could be, um, that could be suggested. So that kind of research is called community-based participatory research. Okay. I think that's that's all the lecture for today. Inshallah, we will continue with uh, lecture two. Inshallah. So, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask in the WhatsApp group. Um, okay. Wallahu uh, taala alam. That's all the class, the lecture for today. Thank you, sir, for today. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.